Hello YouTube and welcome to our newest series in which we will develop a map for the game Ark Survival Evolved. In this series we will go through a little bit of a tutorial on sort of how the Ark Dev Kit works and we will also discuss some good practices and level design and things of that nature. You can see on my screen here that I have the Ark Development Kit open. This is a fresh install. So when you open it, you will see something very similar to this. And yeah, so there's quite a few windows here. And we're going to talk about what they all are and sort of how to navigate the map. Um, the first thing we'll get into is movement. So we can left click and look around. This just rotates us. We can't go up and down. If we move our mouse up, we move forward a little bit. If we move it back, we move backwards a little bit. But for the most part, if you left click, you just sort of rotate. If you right click, you can look around, just sort of like how you would expect. If you right click, you can't move at all, but you can look around, up, down, side to side. Either time while you're using left click or right click, you can use your WASD keys and move around. If we hold both mouse buttons, we can move our camera side to side and up and down. And if we hold Alt and left click, or yeah, Alt and right click, we can move in and out. Alt and left click will let us rotate our camera around a fixed point. That's the general movement of the Unreal Engine. If you haven't used it before, it's fairly similar to the Unity Engine uh, in terms of movement. Um, it's a little more complicated in terms of everything else, but in terms of movement it should be fairly similar. Uh, we'll start talking about some of these windows. Uh, this content browser is pretty self-explanatory but it is the essentially the folder which houses all of the information in an Unreal project. This Arc Development Kit is no different. This holds all of the information in the Arc Development Kit. Whether that's an asset or material or something of that nature, a shader, it's all going to be within this content browser. It's all searchable and it's all navigatable through the folder system. If you want, you can click out this little button right over here, which hides uh, sort of a more traditional file drop-down system. Uh, I typically prefer to have it open, but that's really a personal preference. Uh, up here in this modes window is a pretty useful uh, thing that's in Unreal Engine. You can search from any for anything that you want. If you want a camera, you can find a camera. If you want a light source, you can find a light source. Uh, this is in the standard Unreal Engine build. But we will be using things from this in conjunction with things from our content browser to make our map in Arc. Each, on the top here, there's several different Tabs, they each do different things. Foliage is for, as its namesake, foliage. Landscape is for editing the landscape of the scene that you're going to be creating. Paintbrush we might use a little bit on the on the uh, landscape, but probably not much else. And geometry editing we probably won't touch with this. Along the top we sort of have some, some pretty standard save, build, play type things. I'm not really going to talk about it. Over on the right side here, we have our scene outlier, and this is really just a collection of all the things. If you've used Unity, this is, they call it a hierarchy in Unity. This is just a collection of all the actors in the scene. In Unreal Engine, actors are all of the objects. In Unity, you might hear them called game objects or something of the sort. And on the bottom right here, we have this details window, and this is, as its namesake says, the details of each object in the scene. As I click on each object, it's different. This is the equivalent of an inspector in Unity. Before we get too much into creating this map, we're going to talk a little bit about the download process of the Arc Development Kit. The first thing that you need is the Epic Games Launcher. I will put a link in the description below for you to download it if you don't have it already. Once you've installed the Epic Games Launcher, we open it, we go to our home here. Um, 
actually, I'm sorry, we go to the store, and we search for the ARC editor. Um, it's the same thing, I call it the ARC development kit, same thing, it has all the things that you need. Uh, I should give a warning, this is an extremely large download, to the scale of 160 to 200 gigabytes on your disk. And with that said, a lot of it is pretty memory intensive, and there are parts that are pretty intensive in terms of cache use. So I highly recommend using an NVMe M.2 or a SATA 3 M.2 to store this. It doesn't really matter which key you have for the M.2 as long as it fits in your motherboard. Both of them will be will outperform a standard SATA drive by a significant margin, and that will be important given the number of objects that are here in the development kit to begin with. So once you have it installed, and we're making this map, we really need to decide on quite a few things. I generally like to plan things out before we ever start. Uh, so with that in mind, I have made a map in Photoshop that might give us an idea of what we're going to do. So when we're making this map, we need to talk about a few aspects. We need to think about size. We're going to sort of talk about how we're going to edit this map idea, what our goals with this map are, and I'm not going to show absolutely everything, but I will show enough for you to follow along and explore on your own. With that in mind, it's important to talk about how gameplay affects the map that you play on. Generally, in open world games, the contours of the landscape can have a surprising impact on the player and how they approach the game. People are less likely to run uphills than they are to run downhills. Players are much more likely to follow a path or to stick to a terrain that they're already on. So with that in mind, when we make the map, we need to have several distinct starting locations for the players. I have made another layer that has a color-coded indication of what zones are going to be what. I'm thinking in the center of this map we will have a volcano. That is this large island here. Um, with the larger, da more dangerous creatures higher up. Remember how I was talking about the altitude affecting how a player approaches an open world game. Generally, players will start on coasts or the shore where they don't have to turn their back on something. And this will allow them to get comfortable before they start to venture into more difficult and challenging areas. This is true for almost every open world, uh, but especially true in sort of the survival genre of open world. So each color corresponds to an area, a biome, if you will. The, the tan beige color corresponds to a biome that is a island or tropical variant. This light green corresponds to a open plains biome. The dark brown is a more dangerous biome you might find a T-Rex and other predators in. And the red biome is the most dangerous biome where you might find wyverns or titanosaurs, gigasaurs, things of the top of the food chain type things. And obviously the white is a snow biome that's pretty distinct in Ark. Uh, if you've ever played Ark all the way through, um, snow biomes exist and they're a lot of fun. And the dark green is what I'm planning to have a redwood forest. And then probably in some of these inlets I will put a swamp biome. But this is just a general explanation of what's going on with the map. We'll go through how to make all these biomes in the editor. We'll go through how to make caves in the editor. We'll go through how to raise and change the height of a terrain. We'll go through how to make spawn locations in our map. But I just wanted to give a vague idea of what we're planning to do once we do start the map. So without further ado, let's hop back over into our ARC development kit. And we're not going to do too, too much this episode, but we will create our landscape and sort of compare that to the map idea that we already came up with. The first thing we're going to do is actually get out of this level that is just a test level. So we're going to go up here to File and hit New Level, and we're going to take a default 
level and we're not going to save the test area. So this comes with pretty standard shaders and just a standard setup. It has a lot of stuff we need, uh, but we don't need this template map floor. Um, so we're just going to delete it. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come up here to the landscape and we're going to hit create new and we're going to make sure that it has a material and that material is called mi underscore island I'm sorry mi underscore new island there we go it takes a moment to load uh, as it has to compile the sh shaders of this new terrain if we take a moment and look around we'll see a fairly large map while it compiles the shaders, we can talk about what we're going to do in this series. In this series, we're going to make a map that we will eventually put on the Steam store for people to download and play before we play it ourselves as a company. With that in mind, we're going to make a fairly large map. And that's going to be pretty CPU intensive. I would not recommend such a CPU intensive map unless you have a pretty big beast of a computer uh, and even with that there's going to be significant wait times as we can see here with the compiling shaders. Once this finishes we will talk about the size of our map, how to divide up the sections, and we'll compare it to this Photoshop image that we created earlier. So while that compiles on shaders Let's take a look at this image. And I realize now, after having spent the time making it, that this is in a 16 by 9 format. It's a 4K resolution map. But uh, the arc maps are in quadrants. So we're going to have to edit this a little bit. Uh, I'm not actually going to edit it in Photoshop. When we're putting it onto the quadrant system in the arc development kit, we're going to have to sort of squish in the sides a little bit, but that's not the end of the world. There's a bunch of space here. So, as this finishes, we're going to look at some of the... Let's move this down a little bit. Just some of the options that we can have here. Uh, we're not going to mess with the scale of this at all. Uh, it's just not what we're going to do. Uh, but we will change this uh, section size here in a second. And we won't change the sections per component, nor will we change the number of components. We are just going to create a very large map. And I say that because this 127 by 127 is the size of the island, which is the original map of ARC. Um, so we're going to make something that is roughly double the size of that. And we're going to hit Create. And it's going to take a while. Actually, it's just going to crash. And we're back from the crash. I had to disable the light source. For some reason, it wouldn't let me create a landscape without doing that. But here we are. We have this giant, and I mean giant, map. And we're going to create this entire thing over the course of this series. Starting next episode, we will take a look at how to sculpt the landscape, and we're going to try to match it up with the file that we made in this image here. Uh, and we're going to try to translate that into a 3D navigatable landscape in the next episode. So with that said, thank you for joining us. I can't wait to see you next week when we start to map this out and really get a feel for what we're doing. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. We'll see you next week.